Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer and this is my intro video so you can know what I'm all about so I can refer everyone back to this video. Is I am a psychologist in my day job and I have been for over 20 years. It took me nine years to get my doctorate before that. And so I have been practicing for over 20 years. I've, I'm an author. I used to be on a national radio show and uh, answer questions. People would call in and I would answer questions. So that's part of my history. My, my school that I went to, I am a Christian and I went to a Christian graduate school. It was very rigorous. So they, they have the same standards as other schools, um, even higher than a lot of schools. They're very rigorous. And, but I studied theology as well. So ology is the study of or the science of and theos in greek is god i took greek for two years i took some hebrew i love understanding scripture on a deeper level and so when i looked at a master's program in theology so what pastors will go get the, their masters i was missing like three classes because all my classes overlapped so much so i could have went and got that degree as well but i didn't at the time and so um after that, I'm also a mom. I have I have kids and I keep that my 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 children pretty private. So, but everything else, I'm so open about what what the gifting that God has given me is the Holy Spirit. I let the Holy Spirit lead, all right? So, I have all of this education and and that's a gift that God gave me this opportunity and I took the opportunity, both happened there, to to go through and get all my schooling and my training. It was it was not easy. And I, I did my internship in Montreal at the at McGill University, part of McGill Consortium. And uh, so I got to live in Montreal for a year where they speak French. Wee oui, wee. Oui. And um, but after that is it's still learning this thing, how to let the Holy Spirit lead you. And God puts gifts in every person. And so God has put gifts inside of me. And it's, it's on me to use and activate, activate those gifts and let him hone those gifts and make them better. And, you know, I pray all the time for discernment, to discern between spirits and to, to recognize if someone is of God or of not Team Jesus. And because people I've, you know, I've experienced, I'm sure you have a lot of people within churches that call themselves this, but are not led by the Holy Spirit. And so I learned by some other, some other uh, prophetic voices or YouTubers or whomever, other sisters and brothers in Christ, that uh, you can invite people and I'm inviting you now, take me to God, ask God, is this person from you? Is this person for me? Uh, ask God, did you send her? What is her calling? And, and that's your job to do that. That's your job to have to ask God for discernment, not just write me off because I look a certain way or whatever, because the enemy will work in this to try to get the right people away from people. But, I, but greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. And so I trust that you're here for a reason. And so this is the fun part is, is I went through all of these difficult times. I was very depressed in a lot of different times in my, in my childhood. Even at the beginning of college, I was really depressed. And, um, and so I know what that's like. And so in this time since then, God has been speaking to me through songs, through pop songs, through normal pop songs. And so I was giving this woman an example of a pop song. So like Eddie Money sings that song. Take me home tonight. I don't want to let you go till you see the light. Till we see the light, right? And so what he would, what God was showing me through that song about some guy wanting to take some girl home, um, wanting her to take him home, right? Is God is our true home, divine love, the creator. The, the almighty God, the God, the father of 
the Lord Jesus Christ. For me, it's, I understand God is that. Now I understand that God created all people. So I welcome all people, whoever God sends my way, whatever faith practice you are saying that you have been, God is, it just wants to speak to everybody's heart, but I'm not for everybody, okay? And so what God showed me in that song is like, the masculine is like this logical part of us because men are like straight lines. Like I want to get from here to here and women are like wavy lines. And then we have all our emotions and feelings and stuff and sense senses. But the soul sometimes is called the woman. Like Jesus Christ is the bridegroom of the church, which is the bride. And oftentimes in books, um, spiritual books, like Christian books and stuff, the, the, soul will be called she so that they can dif differentiate and if you want to know i've already made 60 videos by this wonderful christian woman evelyn underhill called mysticism studying the nature and development of spiritual consciousness so you can go watch 60 hours of how we develop our spiritual consciousness so you can understand what i'm talking about that will give you a context but god will give you a context you don't need all of those videos to get a context the holy spirit can give this to you and give you a knowing um and but you have to learn how to discern and so god was showing me in that it's like the man sees that the woman knows about the spiritual true understanding of God. And so he's like, wait, take me home. Take me to this place. God is our true home. We came from God. God is love. Um, beloved, let us love one another. First John 4, 7 and 8, right? For love is of God and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. If you loveth not, he who loveth not or she who loveth not knows not God for God is love. When we're acting in true love, this isn't like, Oh, I'm going to call this love and it's transactional egotism thing. That's not love. When you're acting in true love, in alignment with true love, that's like the word agape love. And that's what C.S. Lewis talks about in The Four Loves. And he talks about it a lot in the book, Mere Christianity. I really, I love Tolkien and Lewis. And um, along my travels, um, back in 1998, I was friends with this uh, secular, you can call it that, musician, Elliot Smith. And, and he really helped, we both helped each other, but he helped me see how God is speaking so deeply and so tenderly and so sweetly and so poignantly and strongly in different songs. And so he helped awaken that in me. And I don't know all what I helped awaken in, in our friendship with him, but um, I mean, I know some, I know some, cause we had conversations and he was very appreciative and, and um, anyway, so I'll often bring him up because his songs just really resonate with what I'm trying, what, what, whatever God keeps speaking through me. And so going back to you, take me home. So the masculine or this logical part of us saying to the spiritual part of us, but not just the spiritual. I'm, not, I'm never into new age. I don't in, I invite, invite anything occult. And I want to keep clear of all of that. But so that's a period at the end of that sentence. So let's go back to take me home. Take me to this place that I see that you know. Ah, I'm hearing an Oasis song. Dun, 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 dun. Um, and give it all away. Don't, don't put your life in the hand of a rock and roll band and give it all away. But um, da, da. there's some lyric in that that's saying the same sentiment as what we're talking about. Uh, uh, anyway. I, I trust that it's coming, but let's go back. Let's stay on this song for now. Is take me home tonight. This this dark night of the soul. I'm in the dark night of the soul. It's in Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. The Lord is my shepherd. Christ says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, um, the, the, his sheep hear his voice. So we hear his voice. So if you're called to this channel, ask God if you're called to this because not everybody is and and so the, it's God speaking through me but n not everyone can get it or will understand what he's speaking through me uh, and God is beyond he and she look at Psalm 27 10 though my mother and father forsake me the I am that I am the Lord capital L-O-R-D Yahweh picks me up so God picks us up and wants to love us and bring us back home he's always bringing us back home what you know Christ is saying when he says to 
uh, the, the thief on the cross next to him that recognizes he's the Christ. He says, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. And so every time I hear songs like Almost Paradise, it's like Christ, you know, we, we were in paradise and then Adam and Eve left paradise. And Christ is always wanting to reconcile us with the true paradise, which is not the seduction of this world of running after riches or egotism or filling yourself up or believing the lies about yourself and putting yourself down and trying to build your identity on how much of a victim you are. You're, you're not meant to build your identity on that. Your identity is found in that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. That's your worth. He was wise. He was, he was uh, the God man on earth. If if he knew how to walk on water, he knew how to take those nails out and he didn't. He stayed on the cross to be the curse for us, to take on the curse. Not He wasn't the curse, he took on the curse for us. I never want to misspeak mis as much as I can possibly. I'm like, God help me not to misspeak ever on this channel. God, clear up anything that's gone in the past and, and, and you know, uh, make, it, make it right, all for the glory of God, that's what I wish. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. And so Christ didn't come down from the cross. He stayed because by his wounds, we are healed. He, he took, um, he was pierced for our transgressions, forsaken of men, cut off from the land of living. He knew no sin. And that's a song that's coming to me about um, Isaiah, an Isaiah passage that was prophesying about Christ. That song is a West King song. A guy named West King sang a song about uh, by his wounds we are healed. It's a really beautiful song. And so sometimes I will get Christian songs, but um, anyway, uh, because I had experienced so much betrayal and hurt by Christians, uh, for a while I just thought Christian songs were people that were pretending to be Christian, faking it. And so I couldn't listen to them for a long time. Um, but some, some I could. Some people I met, like I met Wes King um, when I was a child. I met him singing and I, I met this woman named Kim Hill. I think she was there. And I, anyway, I won't name any other names, but, but anyway, I know my sister met her. She rode in this van with her. And so I got to hear that story. And I can't remember if I was at camp at the same time she came to our camp. So anyway, um, so going back to Eddie Money's song, take me home tonight. I don't want to let you go till we see the light, right? Until both of us see this light of Christ that wants to bring us back to perfect union with God because Christ is our righteousness. The blood of Christ covers us. Now, I'm not trying to alienate any religion. When, when we do the sign of the cross, that's just, I receive this blessing that you're giving me. That's what I learned about it. And I learned like this is... God is, you are both have a divine nature and a human nature, and Christ was divine and human, but we're not the same as Christ. He's the only begotten, but this is the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost. So when you do this, it's just a symbol. It's a symbol, okay? Don't get caught up in the symbols, but, and so I have this weird background. I might as well just say it here is I'm part um, Cherokee Indian, so I'm part Native American and another tribe, um, and I grew up evangelical. I have I've had a spiritual director for many years that's Catholic. I studied the Orthodox and got permission by this Archbishop Callistos Ware before he passed away, God rest his soul, uh, to, uh, to go on these certain travels that I went to. And I thank God, I thank God that I asked for this blessing beforehand because I just didn't want to get into anything that was off off the path and I still got myself in hot water but that wasn't that wasn't because of God and and so I, I just felt this tremendous blessing because it, it took him like seven months later to write me back on my email he's like as of your email in July 20 whenever it was I don't know how long it took it took a long time but I was like so happy that I heard from him so I have this love for that for the Catholics for the Orthodox um, we think that my grandparents were Jewish when they came over here because they carried a menorah, but they were, um, the, a lot of them were killed during the Bolshevik revolution and that other time, um, in Germany, they, they, they got out of there and they converted to Christianity. And so, and then I've studied some Eastern stuff and I love the Sufi poet Rumi. And so I just, 
and then I was at an Anglican church for for a lo for over 15 years. I was at an Anglican church, and so that's what C.S. Lewis is. J.R. Tolkien was Catholic. Now, all of these are just names of denominations. God is above all of these names. Now, there can be heretical things in each of these places. I was going to a Lutheran church the other day, and and um, anyway, I can go into that some other time. But but God gave me this appreciation for all people of all races and and from all places, and. I just have this love and I want you to know this perfect love of God. I'll, I simplify it pretty much as like God is love. Christ came to reconcile us because we cannot be perfect. So he was our perfection for us to bring us back to this perfect God. Um, God speaks through to, to me through songs. And so I will teach you, let's say I have sessions. I have like right now I have all these sessions with Dr. Cheryl. Sessions are like music sessions and also like a play on words for psychology sessions, even though I can't be your psychologist online. Go seek professional help if you need professional help. I do have all my training though with my clients and with my years of study and with the years of practice, right? And so I will teach like an hour of how like an avoidant person will run away in this way or a securely attached person will do this or whatever. It's just like, I wanna use all of the tools and skills and the knowledge that I've been given to give it back to other people. God always taught me to have an open hand. If something comes to me, it's meant to go to ever have an open hand to give it to other people. And so he just taught me that. He taught me that and I asked for wisdom since I was little, little, little. My dad taught me to ask for that. And that's that's one really good thing that I appreciate from, from him. And anyway, um, and so take me home tonight. I don't want to let you go till we see the light, until we both have the spiritual. Ephesians 6 says we battle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and wicked rulers in high places. If you haven't seen the wicked rulers in high places, then I don't know what world you've been living in because they'll, the enemy of our soul, Jesus says he, he came to, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So that's, that's what you see the aftermath of uh, after he uses people and they get the high and then they get dropped low. But Jesus said, I have come to bring you life and life abundantly. That's John 10, 10. And that word for life in Greek is Zoe. And so C.S. Lewis makes the distinction. Bios is biological. Zoe is this eternal. And, and he says the difference that's being made in you is like turning a regular horse into a flying horse or a, a statue into a real man or woman, real boy or girl like Pinocchio, right? When, when God gets a hold of you and starts do not be conformed, formed with this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your, your, the word for mind there is N-O-U-S in Greek. It's nous. And it's your perception. God wants to renew your whole understanding. It's more than just your mind. It's your heart and your mind and your perception, your mind, will, emotions. Anyway, he wants to make us new. So not be conformed is formed with. Don't latch on to this world's way of thinking and this world's way of seeing things with these physical eyes. I pray God open their spiritual eyes. You pray yourself, ask God to open your spiritual eyes so you can see what I'm saying. I'm, I'm getting a queen song, hold on. And so, I'm, get, I'm getting part of another one bites the dust, I think. And, um, and I always love somebody to love, but, um, I mean, and, and like when I get a song like Another One Bites the Dust, usually what God shows me, and I don't want to direct him, but however he directs me is like, oh, okay, let them go. Shake the dust off your feet. That's that's what I'm getting right now. It's like, if people don't accept this or don't understand, that's fine. Shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. I'm called to keep moving in the gift that God has called me to, active, to activate, to act in, to listen to, to be bold in that. That's my calling. And I'm sticking to that. And so, um, <laughs> but I was going to say before, it's like if there's another one bites the dust, it's like learning how to die this ego death. And so take me home tonight. That's what I was saying in this night is like, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And give us this day, our daily bread. So, so, 
Christ rose again from the dead. He wants to give us this resurrection power. He wants to use our gifts and put he put gifts in us to use for good or for evil. And so I'm like, let's go hashtag Team Jesus. Every It says, St. Paul said that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So I'm like, why don't we just go now? Like, go now because it's so much better of a, of a path. But I can't, I'm not here to convince you of that. It's just learning how to be detached from this world to this, detached from this world in the correct way. Not numb, not depressing. See, if you press down on your heart, you depress it. And that's people get numb and then you're numb to joy and you're not meant to be numb to joy. No, Proverbs 4 says, guard your heart above all else for it is the wellspring of life. And Jesus says, I'm the living water. The one who believes in me, the person who believes in me, in you will be springs of well, of springing water, living water in you. And that's meant to nourish other people. That's what you're, you have gifts inside of you. And part of what I do is Act in my gifts so that you can know it's important for you to act in your gifts. Um, it's not acting. It's just action is happening because I'm trusting and I'm being bold in the way that he's called me to teach. So let me think of, let me see if there's anything more in that song. Oh yeah, G.K. Chesterton says, and he wrote the book called Orthodoxy. That's really good. It's in C.S. Lewis's top 10 books that most influenced his life. So if you look up my video called Voice Dream Reader that I made years and years ago, it I have the PDF link for, ten, for his 10 books, I think, if I could find them, whatever I could find there. So, so you can go get all these. I'm always wanting to give free resources to people. All right, and so that's one of them. But G.K. Chesterton said, every man in a brothel is looking for God. It's just like St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless until they find their repose in thee, O God. Like until, they, until we find our rest in God, until we find this true home and know that, no, this is perfect love. Oh, no wonder I kept making all these other things my idol and I kept getting my heart broken. Well, Jesus said, I came to heal the brokenhearted, all right? And he called me to do that. He wants to do that through me. And it's an honor for me to do that. And so I'm so glad you came here and this is my intro video. And I wish you so much love, real love, real love. <laughs>